Hello and welcome to Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. My name is Mikhail and we're welcome on the show. Now, um, some politics cannot be kept away from sports and sometimes all it takes is a quick accusation and the world of an athlete or even indeed a coach can be turned right upside down with their career on the line. And that is exactly what happened in the USA men's sports, uh, men's football recently. An investigation into former U.S. coach Greg Berhalter's dispute with his wife outside a bar in 1992 concluded that U.S. soccer was not in the wrong for hiring him as the national team coach, the Federation said on Monday, March 13th. The investigators' conclusions mean there is now no legal impediment to employing Berhalter, who remains a candidate for the coaching job, which is now held by Anthony Hudson on an interim basis. The investigation came after uh, Berhalter criticized Jewish midfielder Gio Reyna, who said... Uh, who he said had not met expectations at the World Cup in Qatar with Reyna's mother, Danielle, informing the Federation of the 1992 incident. Danielle and Berhalter's wife, Rosalind, were previously college roommates and football teammates. Uh, Berhalter has said he regrets kicking his wife of 25 years in the legs during the dispute and that they ultimately reconciled and learned from the incident. The investigators said they were impressed with Berhalter's candor and demeanor during the investigation and that he had cooperated fully and extensively. However, they said they were less impressed with Rayner's cooperation. U.S. Soccer Sporting Director Ernie Stewart had also decided to vacate his position amid an ongoing shakeup at the organization, which said interviews were underway to hire his replacement. Now, I'm joined on the line by Wale Agbede. Wale, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Mokai. Uh, great to be on the show with you. Thank you. Now, uh, this whole thing smells of politics. It smells of discontent on the part of an overzealous uh, mother. I think in the U.S. they call them soccer moms. In this case, it's at the very top level. Her child, her son, a professional footballer, was criticized by his manager, his head coach. And uh, rather than the player take on a, a stronger position to prove his worth to the team, his mother came in to fight his battles for him, and uh, she did so by throwing allegations about old incidents that uh, is not perhaps for us to judge because th the two parties involved in it had already settled it. What do you make of this? Yeah, I think, I think it's just a clear case of uh, unnecessary petulance. Um, a youthful exaggeration that that has gone too far, right? Because, I mean, we see managers criticize players every other day, especially at club level, mm. where football comes in thick and fast, week in, week out. Um, so when, when your manager or, I mean, your line manager at work or, I mean, whoever it is that you are subordinate, subordinate to, mm. right, at your place of work, criticizes you, criticizes your attitude towards work, or you not you know delivering the basic minimum that you have to right? What you should do is to get down to work, you know, dig your head in the ground and get down to work. Not you know sending your mom, you know, to go dig up dirt about your manager, you know. Mm. And look, mm. it, it, it it was just really disturbing, really, um, to see the manner in which uh, all of this played out. Because Gio Reyna is a young player, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, he's a player who has shown a lot of potential at Borussia Dortmund. Um, but even at Dortmund, he struggled to get game time, yes. right? Yeah. So he says something about his attitude. He says something about his application. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I was always on the side of Peralta that, look, if your player isn't given enough, then he has to sit on the bench. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, unfortunately, uh, first of all, Let's clear the air. We cannot at any time condone any sort of violence, domestic or otherwise. And um, Greg Behalter was very candid about the incident. Uh, he held his hand up, apologized, and um, he has done so to his wife in private. And they've 
um, dealt with the issue, and hopefully nothing like that has happened since. But it, what's interesting to me about this story is that this accusation forced women, uh, men's U, uh, USA men's team to have to go ahead and investigate whether they committed an error in the process of hiring him. It is. It sounds odd to me that uh, the man's private life and the incidents within that could be used as a, a means to scapegoat the process that hired him to his job as though he were no longer qualified? Well, um, I mean, so, yes, with regards to, to football and sports generally, mm. especially with how popular it has become, uh, there's a lot of focus on the personalities uh, behind the, these roles. Um, it extends to players also, you know, which, which, when, when clubs are scouting for players, you know, some of the boxes that they have to check Right, you know, it involves a lot of personality traits. Like, you know, how confident is this person when this person is going through a phase, you know, where there's a series of failures? You know, how does this person uh, handle it? You know, how how does this person relate with uh, colleagues? You know, so there are a lot of um, personality traits, a lot of behavioral traits that might pertain to to private life that are important. You know, especially at this level of the game, um, but. Can the U.S. men's national team really blame themselves if if the the, the case of domestic um, abuse that is that is the topic here if it wasn't reported to the authorities like is the case of Berata, um, then how exactly would they have known that um, he had committed such such crime? And secondly, I am always 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 against cancel culture, right? If this thing happened in 1992 and Beralta became manager of the United States about three or four years ago, if it happened in 1992 and Beralta and his wife um, have settled this issue, you know, they probably sought counseling and they become better people, right? If he was qualified for the job based on merit, then I think that he should get the job, not necessarily because of um, something that he did in 1992. Now, I know that a lot of people mm. might not agree with me because um, we're in a generation where people like to cancel people, regardless of you know how much work you've put in to become better or not. Yeah. Um, but well, I don't support it. Well, um, I, I don't think that the men's national team should should have to immerse themselves you yeah. know, in, in such... Uh, uh, Wale, uh, the um, next World Cup is going to be co-hosted by Canada, Mexico, and the United States. Um, some people have raised the uh, possibility of men's um, uh, soccer finding a way to elevate themselves to actually compete and potentially even win the tournament come 2026, with 48 teams going to be participating in making it the biggest, most inclusive uh, World Cup in history. Um, the talk now shifts to try to secure the next top head coach for the team, whether Greg Behalta is going to get the job back or not. Some people have uh, potentially raised uh, uh, Thierry Henry as a potential candidate. Other, obviously, other qualified managers are in the market. Uh, would it be fair to bring Greg Berhalter back to the team, is he qualified enough to deliver f uh, this national team's objectives of competing, hopefully at least to the ver latter stages of the competition, the semi-finals and so forth? So it's, it's, it's two ways, right? Mm. Um, the first one is, before this incident involving uh, Jorena and, and his mom mm. that led to him being suspended and subsequently dismissed, um, did the United States men's national team think that they were going to sack Berata? If not, then that means they thought that he was good enough to take the national team forward. Mm. Um, on a personal basis, I saw the United States at the last World Cup in Qatar. I thought they were a good team. They looked yeah. like... Um, they had the, you know, the team looked like he had the future in it. A lot of young players, uh, like, I mean, Timothy Weir, obviously, uh, the, the, the highlights for them at the World Cup. Um, so it looks like it seemed that that can grow into the next World Cup in 2026. So, again, 
if they thought that Berata was good enough to stay after the World Cup, that means they were expecting that he was going to continue to take the team forward at the very least into the next competition. And the only reason that they sacked him is because of the allegations that were, you know, leveled against him. Then he deserves his job. Now, the second part is now that they've sacked him and, you know, you know, even though his name has been cleared, you know, fair enough to him, can they now expand their nets and say, well, I mean, Berata was good, but we already took a decision because of the allegations levied against him. Can we now do better? You know, are there better managers in the market? I think there are. And don't forget, there, there is always a layer of the United States, living in the United States, working in the United States. They might not have the most talented squad, but I would like to think that it would be an attractive uh, proposition to a number of top managers. Would they get the cream of the crop? Uh, I don't necessarily think so. Uh, but can they get better than Greg Berata? Maybe, maybe, just maybe. But does he deserve his job back? I absolutely think he does. Well, they certainly have to make a decision quickly. Um, the preparations for the next World Cup needs to get on the way as quickly as possible.